guys, welcome back to the run around here on ESPN 1300, brought to you by Hollybird Sports. This is the only show dedicated to runners and endurance athletes everywhere. And if you want great customer service for all of your running needs, check them out at hollybirdsports.com. Once again, that's Hollybird Sports. Now we're talking about the Olympics here. This is the home of the best Olympic talk you're going to find. We follow the Olympic sports year round, so please stay tuned. We were talking about track and field earlier with Running Times columnist Parker Morse, but now we're going to get to some more events. We only really scratch the surface in terms of what we covered there. And if you would like to join in on the conversation, the phone number here is 410-481-1300, and we'd love to hear from you. And something I want to point out here. Uh, Ryan made some great points about the women's and men's 10K here, but he only watches the track events as they are aired at prime time on NBC, meaning this is about day 10 of his media blackout. He avoids Twitter, he avoids uh, anything on the internet, it's basically whatever he sees on TV is what he gets. Day 10, Twitter, Facebook, internet media blackout. I mean, people bring up MSNBC.com, Yahoo, anything on Google. I just shun my eyes from the internet. It's been pretty tough, but I've got to tell you, I feel like a champion, and I feel like I deserve a gold medal. You're a real trooper, Ryan. i got it, to tell you, that's just an amazing feat that you're doing that. Tell me how many other people out there are really doing that. I'd like to hear that. Like, legitimately, uh, no joke. No one. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm on a radio show about running. It's, it's very difficult for one big reason. I think Twitter alone. They're on Twitter. I mean, there's spoil, spoiler alert, alerts every, every which way you look. It's addictive. It's amazing. Press releases on emails, you know, the internet. You can't get on NBC.com, and then maybe you can even see a picture. And it ruins the results for you. You can't even it. type in it, the autofill in Google brings up. I think it's just Olympics minded right now. Their algorithm changed, and <laughs> if it's just you type in the letter M, and all of a sudden it's like Michael Phelps wins. You know whatever. It's, so the world's against you. Right? It really the is. The world's against but you. But I'm doing it. A couple more days. Anyway, so this is day ten of <laughs> Ryan's media blackout. But one thing he didn't fail to miss, or nor did we fail to miss, the results of the world's fastest man. And if you have any opinions on this. Please give us a call, 410-481-1300. We will give a $25 gift certificate to Hollybird Sports for the first person to call us in. So once again... And if we agree with you. Yeah, yeah you most informed. Have something yeah. We're not us. talking gymnasts and gymnastics and rhythmic gymnastics like... Uh, Dressage that. was pretty cool with those horses. Yeah, yeah, the one to horse tested positive for steroids. I did hear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time we got yeah. it. Good, book. Good thing we're on the lookout, WADA. Give us, give us a call, 410-481-1300, if you have something to say about the world's fastest man that we saw last night, and you will get the $25 gift certificate to Hollywood Sports. So maybe we should preface it with spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, in case you missed in case last night's coverage. Make sure you say something that Ryan doesn't know yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, Usain Bolt once again proves that he is the world's fastest man. Just a fantastic championship runner. Uh, and I'll tell you what, seeing him in the semifinals, he ran, what, nine? Nine? He was 987. Nine so in the semis, you had you had Johan Blake run 982. You had Justin Gallen run 985. And you had Usain Bolt run 987. And uh, I mean, the three of them, it was clear that that was going to be your podium. And that's how it rounded out. But Usain Bolt in that final, unstoppable. I mean, the thing is, is when you watch these guys run, run the semifinals, their turnover is very quick. Justin Gatlin, Tyson Gay, Johan Blake, they're, they're of shorter stature than Usain Bolt. So their turnover is much quicker. But it's simply amazing to see someone who harnesses so much power in a six foot five frame. And when he eases up to just make his way through the semis, he's already won the heat and then he doesn't want to expend too much energy going into the final, he makes it look like a jog. So it's impossible to think that he's not going to win the final. So I immediately assumed that he was going to win. But nonetheless, it was actually closer than I thought. And it was actually the fastest, fastest. 100 meter final that we've ever seen. The firepower you had in that, three Americans, three Jamaicans, the fastest people in the world of all time, it was just, it was the perfect 100 meter final. Anyway, we're being joined by Chris from Whitehall right now, talking about the Olympic track and field and the world's fastest man. Chris, thanks for joining us. Oh, never mind, we just lost him there, unfortunately, so we'll get in touch with him soon later. So as soon as you say that, I'm jinxing people. And maybe, no, oh. maybe he said, I can't ruin this for Ryan. I'm about to give all a right. big spoiler alert for Ryan. Uh, what, what, is, what was it about today's stuff? That's what it said. Um, but anyway, so we'll get in touch with someone. We'll get some calls. Look it there. over and say it anyway. Okay, but anyway, yeah. look at this race, though. Five men, the top five men, all under 9.90 seconds. And running 9.90 used to be an incredible feat. Now everyone's doing it. 
The only one over 10 seconds, Asafa Powell, only because he pulled up. Yeah, he had a groin injury. And the ironic thing about that is Asafa Powell, of everyone in that field, has broken 10 in the most instances. So really, in terms of the quantity of fast 100 meters, as defined by, you know, breaking 10 seconds, he was the most accomplished man. And that guy who finished seventh, Richard Thompson, was second in four years ago. Exactly. So this is I mean, it's something else. And really, to see the field, and there's been this a great presence of this USA versus Jamaica rivalry, and to see that the top three Americans and the top three Jamaicans all made it to a final of eight men, that's pretty cool. I just really respected and appreciated how humble Usain Bolt was after the race when he said, I am the best, uh, I am the best ever, I will always be the best and basically nobody can ever beat me. Because that, it takes a lot of humility to say something like that. Yeah, no, no, boo boo. <laughs> anyway, we're being joined by Alfredo from Philly, calling in from Philly here in Baltimore. Alfredo, how's it going, my friend? Hey, it's good, going good. How's it going for you guys? We're doing well, thanks for calling in. Um, we're talking about the world's fastest man in the 100 meter dash that was uh, contested last night. What'd you think of that? Uh, I thought it was pretty amazing. Um, like you guys said, uh, three Jamaican guys, also three uh, Americans as well. Uh, which takes up uh, already six of eight runners. Uh, there's only two other runners from uh, other countries, which I thought was outstanding in itself, uh, showing that we're, we're uh, us in Jamaica are pretty much powerhouses in sprinting events. But like, uh, like you guys said, uh, it was just amazing. I mean, a lot of people commented Usain Bolt out, um, uh, losing to uh, Johan Blake twice in the Jamaican trials, and they didn't know if he uh, still had uh, another 2008 uh, performance in him, but let, uh, let alone he he came through in the Olympic record time, and I thought that was pretty amazing in itself. So, did you see the semifinals? Uh, I did watch the semifinals. What did you think of that when you saw Blake kind of jogging through with a 9.87 second 100? Did you think that this was his to lose at that point? Yeah, I, I definitely thought that. Um, I I also saw you saying both you saying both race, and he didn't look as uh. Well, I saw the round one race. I saw the, uh, his round, uh, his semifinal race as well. But uh, Usain Bolt's round one race, his uh, his race was uh, he didn't look as good as I thought he would uh, in his round one race. But he he he, he immediately uh, changed my thoughts when I saw him run his semifinal race, and um, he looked pretty good. Uh, Gatlin looked very well. I thought Gatlin was uh, he was he was actually I thought he was going to be a contestant for the gold. Uh, I didn't I didn't know he he would. Uh, uh, do well, not not bad. Not saying bronze is bad at all. That's 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 great. That's a great position, especially but with this I, field. Was that? Especially. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Alfredo. So, so, uh, I'm the, sorry. Go ahead. Hey, Alfredo. It's Zach. Um, for those of you who don't know, Alfredo actually runs with me at LaSalle University. He's on the cross country oh, yeah. track team, so he actually knows a lot of what he's talking about. And the first three finishers in the hundred meter today, or the other night, uh, they were all under. Seven eight, which was we're nine point eight here. Uh, yeah, nine point eight. Seven eight. Wow. Nine point eight. <laughs> seven eight. That's in a, maybe a couple of years, but uh, they were all under nine eight, and that was the first time I think that's happened for ever fix ever. Yeah, ever. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. anyway, easily one of the best best performances in the Olympics I've ever seen and across all sports. While I don't approve of fifteen minutes of introductions, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it is it's interesting to see how loose and relaxed these guys are, you know, making faces and, and joking around at the on the start line. So I guess it was good. They threw that beer bottle behind them. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, Man, that was those guys are definitely entertainers. That's why that's why everybody loves watching the 100 meters, uh, uh, 100 meter sprint, uh, just because it's so fun to watch. Um, like you guys said earlier. Uh, not not any everybody can uh, grind out twenty five watching twenty five laps on the track, but a lot everybody loves uh, hundred meters not only because it's short, but because those guys are such good entertainers and they're good at uh, uh, making the fans you know enjoy watching the show. And that's what's good for the sport. I mean, really, as as a real aficionado of the sport, I can watch the ten k and watch twenty five laps and never lose my excitement for it. Oh, same but really, here. <laughs> these guys are athletes and they're good for the face of the sport. And I love to see everyone get excited. The for introductions the are great. I still remember Bernard Williams a couple years ago. You know when they introduced him, just making some good faces at the camera. You know the girls one hundred, the one girl that blew a kiss at the camera. Yvette Lalova. Yeah, it makes it makes it interesting. It makes it a little bit more entertaining and gives them it gives them some humanity versus more right. than just the machine. Yeah, it makes you. It helps you get to get to learn to, uh, or get to know the athletes that that you're watching run. You know, not just by watching their times they run, but also getting a dose of their personality as well. 
Absolutely. We agree. Well, Alfredo, thanks for calling in. And you have won the $25 gift certificate to hollywoodsports.com. Stay on the line. Our producer will get your information. We'll send that your way. Awesome. All right. Thanks for joining us. But that is a good point. I mean, I think that the celebrations, you know, the, the intro is as, as, as much as it doesn't really align with the traditional kind of stodgy atmosphere or, or uh, presence that track and field gives off, I think it's good. It's Usain not over Bolt. the top. And Usain Bolt is actually toned down. He is. And, years. and, you know, he really is good for the sport to get fans and seats. You get your money's worth if you have Usain Bolt in your event. And we also have to talk about the fastest woman in the world, also a Jamaican, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, who is the defending Olympic, cha Olympic champion from 2008. So that is also an interesting thread, something to mention here. The men's, fast, the men's 100, fastest man in the world, is a defending champion. Also, the same with the women. She ran 10.75 and beating Carmelita Jenner. And if you watched her, you know, the NBC did the little, uh, the little story piece on her. It was a great, I thought it was a great story. Uh, you know, didn't know all that myself. She's a, a great, you know, just a cute little girl. So excited to be out running. Uh, you know, another good face for the sport. Uh, and it had a great race. And, you know, importantly, look how the Americans did. It was, again, you know, you had two Jamaicans, three Americans. Carmelita Jetter, you know, she gets herself in there. Uh, but where do we see Allison Felix finish? Uh, you know, she finishes fifth. Just and granted, she is more of a 200 runner. Do I think... I don't want to say she's wasting her time in the 100. I think these rounds do help her for the 200, though, but it, it is tough to watch. Yeah. It's just a great field. The 100 meters, the men's and women's fields, were stacked this season, so that's the way it is. But anyway, uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking more about the Olympics and talk about the Athlete of the Week. And finally, usually we do this at the beginning of the show, but get Brad's thought of the day. See what Brad's really thinking. Stay tuned.